99% of Excel users won't be able to quickly analyze this messy data. Let's get you into the 1%. Ninety-nine percent of Excel users will try to analyze this data this way. They'll try to click maybe here on A4. Maybe they'll just try and I highlight the whole list across until they get to the ends. And then they'll go to insert from the ribbon at the top. Choose a chart. Line chart looks as good as any. Let's do a 2D line chart. And the data looks an absolute mess. Now, the reason that this chart looks rubbish is because the data is dirty. You've got some dirty data going on. Wouldn't it be better if you could structure your data in such a way so as to take advantage of all the powerful tools that come with Microsoft Excel? In this way, you can create eye-catching interactive dashboards, enabling you and your users to get the answers they need quickly. But before you can create this, you must turn the structure of this into this. You need to unpivot the data. Note the repetition of data, north, 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 and team one, team one, team one. This data has been unpivoted and you will have to structure your data this way if you want to create those powerful dashboards. Make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to solve a problem most people would be unable to solve. This is what you do. I'd like to mention from the outset that if you want to follow along, I've made the link to this file available to you down below. So make sure you take advantage of it. First thing we're going to do is select the data and bring it into Power Query. You do this by clicking at the bottom. I'm going to hold down the control key and press the right arrow to go to the very bottom right hand corner of the data. Hold down control, shift and tap home to go all the way to the top of the data. Let go of the control key, but keep the shift key held down as I tap down three times to select. Next, I'm going to click on data from the ribbon at the top and then click on from table range. Select the checkbox that says my table has headers and then click OK. This loads the data into Power Query. The first thing we're going to do is fill down column one. Fill down means to take whatever value is at the top of column one and repeat that value down until you get a new value. So if we click on column one at the top and then click on transform, Next, we're going to click on the Fill drop-down menu and choose Down. Now you can see North, North, North repeated all the way down to South. We'll need to do this to make sure that our data is structured correctly. Next, I will need to remove the totals from the data because if the totals are not removed, you won't be able to analyze the data correctly. So first, I'm going to click up here and type End on the keyboard to go to the last um, column. I'm then going to right click on the totals column and go down to and click remove to remove the column. Before we continue, I think it's a good idea to talk about the applied steps section on the right hand side. If you have a look closely here, you can see it says removed columns. That was the last action I undertook. If you look above, it says filled down. If you make a mistake while following through on this tutorial, you will quickly realize Power Query does not have an undo facility. So if you make a mistake, you can use the applied step section on the right to undo that mistake. Have a look at this. See where it says removed columns. If I click on the little cross to the left, it undoes that removed column. The last column that I removed in this case was totals. Let's re remove that column again. Right click on totals and click on remove. And you can see in the applied steps section it's applied a new step. Next we'll need to remove the totals from the row at the bottom of the data. So I'm going to tap home on the keyboard to go back to the first column. I'm going to click on the drop down list for column two. You see the column drop down list there. 
And then I can scroll all the way down to the bottom and untick totals. I also do not require the null value across any rows. So if I go up and untick null, next I'm going to click on OK. The next thing I will have to do is to convert all of these column headers, which are currently dates, into rows so that they're no longer going across as column headers, but going down as rows. Now, some people may feel that this is just an orientation issue, that I just need to transpose the data, but more is involved because when I convert the columns into rows, I will need to make sure the extra gaps that are created are filled in for column one and column two. This process is known as unpivoting data, and this is how you do it. So I'm wanting to unpivot all of the date columns. So I'm gonna click on column one, hold down my shift key on the keyboard, then click on column two. Right click using the mouse and go all the way down to and choose unpivot other columns. And the data is unpivoted. Now I'm going to correct some column headers and change some data types. So the first column one, I'm going to double click and rename that area and press enter on the keyboard. Next column two, I'm going to double click and rename team. Press enter. Attribute, I'm going to change the data type by clicking on this data type drop down menu and choose date. It then converts the data type from text to date. I'm also going to rename this column date. And the last column value, I'm going to change the data type to currency. So click on the data type drop down menu and choose currency. And I'm going to change the column header to sales amount. Press enter. Now that the data has been correctly structured, I'm going to load it back into Microsoft Excel. Click on the Home tab on the ribbon, click on Close and Load, and then click on Close and Load 2. I'm going to select Table, New Worksheet, and click on OK. Now we can see the data is in the correct structure so that we can go on and create that fantastic dashboard you saw earlier. One thing to note is that Excel has converted the original data into a table. Let's create a pivot table from this data. Let's click back on table one, click anywhere in that table, click on insert at the top, and then click on pivot table. We're going to choose New Worksheet and click on OK. Our pivot table has been created on a new sheet. The first thing I'm going to do is analyze the data by area, north, south, east, and west. So in the pivot table field section on the right-hand side, I'm going to drag area into rows, sales amount into values. Now have a look at the pivot table on the left-hand side of your screen. I'm just gonna hold down the control key on my mouse and use the wheel to roll away from me, and that enlarges or zooms in on the data. Now there's a couple of things I need to do here. First, sum of sales amount is in the wrong numerical format. I want to see that as pounds and pence. So right-click on any number, go down to and choose number format, and then double click on accounting. The next thing that you've probably noticed is the order of areas is incorrect. It says east, north, south, west, and that is because it's in alphabetical order, E for east down to W for west. Now to be able to correct this, we will have to create what's known as a custom list. And this is how you do it. Let's say, for instance, if we click in G1 
and we'll type in the correct order for those areas. North, press enter, south, east, west. You could do north, east, south, west if you wanted to. I'm going to do north, south, east, west. Now I'm going to select those areas and go to file all the way down to and click on options. From the categories on the left hand side, choose advanced and then move all the way down to the bottom. I'm using the scroll bar on the right hand side, but you can use the wheel on your mouse. Find edit custom lists. Give it a click. Now you can see in the custom lists box, G1 to G4 is already selected because that's what we did beforehand. If you need to, you can select on it now. Click on import. Click on OK. Click on OK at the bottom. And now to apply the custom list, click anywhere in east, north, south, west within the pivot table. Click on the drop down arrow in cell A3. Choose more sort options. Choose more options. Untick sort automatically every time the report is updated. And in the drop down list for custom list, scroll down and choose north, south, east, west. Click on OK. Choose ascending by area. Click on OK. And now you can see it's in the correct order, north, south, east, west. Now that's done, we have no need for those areas in the G column. So let's select G1 to G4 and press delete on the keyboard. The next thing we'll do is create a chart out of this data and place it onto a new sheet in our spreadsheet, our dashboard sheet. First, we'll click anywhere within our pivot table. Then we'll click on pivot table analyze at the top. Next, click on pivot chart. Next thing we need to do is choose an appropriate chart for this pivot table. I'm gonna choose column, clustered column, and click on OK. You can see our pivot chart is created. The next thing I'm going to do is move this chart to a new sheet. So I'm gonna create a new sheet at the bottom by clicking on the plus, and I'm gonna double click and call that sheet dashboard. I'm gonna drag the sheet just to the very end of the other sheets. Now I'm going back to my pivot chart, right click on the chart and go to cut. Then I'm going to click on my dashboard sheet, right click and choose paste. And there we have our chart on our dashboard, the very first. Now I want to create a graph that charts the amount of sales by month. So let's click back on our sheet two, and we're gonna copy this pivot table. So click in the pivot table, control A to select. I'm gonna hold down control and press C to copy, and just click to the right and control V to paste. I'm now going to adjust this pivot table so that we can analyze this data by month. So I'm going to remove area by unticking and drag date into rows. Now I can see how much money I've made per month. Now I'm particularly interested in year and month. So right click on any month, I've right clicked on January and go down to and choose group. In the box that appears, make sure that years and months are selected. I'm gonna deselect days and then click on okay. And now we can see our data structured by year and month. Next, I'm gonna create a line chart out of this. So I'm gonna click on pivot table analyze, pivot charts, and choose line. Click on okay. I can now see a beautiful line chart. Let us cut and paste that into our dashboard sheet. Right click any white area in the chart and go to cut, click on dashboard, right click on any area and go to and choose the per first paste option and adjust the size of the charts. 
If you need to, you can use this plus and minus button to see different levels. Of course, the chart is pretty useless looking at the year level because I've only got one year in the data. Next, I'd like a smoothed line for my line chart. So I'm going to right click on the line, go down to and choose Format Data Series. In the Format Data Series section on the right hand side of your screen, click on the Fill and Line paint bucket. Go down to and check Smoothed Line. Starting to look pretty good. The next thing that I want to see is a breakdown of how much revenue was generated per team. Let's do that. So I'm going to go back to sheet two where my pivot tables are. I'm going to copy this pivot table, control C, click to the right, control V. Now I'm going to adjust this pivot table. So if you cannot see the pivot table section on the right hand side, click on this button here, which says pivot chart fields. So I'm going to remove date by unticking and years by unticking. And I'm going to drag team into rows. I can see now a breakdown of how much revenue how much sales amount generated per team. Now I'm going to create a chart out of this. Click anywhere in the pivot table. I'm going to press escape to get rid of the marching ants from the other pivot table that I copied. And then I'm going to go to pivot table analyze, pivot charts. And this time I'm going to choose a bar chart, clustered bar chart. Click on OK. And there's my bar chart that I'm going to copy or rather cut and paste to my dashboard sheet. Right click, cut, click on dashboard, right click, paste. And there's our chart. I'm just gonna adjust and make some space and let me just move this down and move my line chart to the left. I'm gonna change my clustered bar chart so it's a bit higher. And then I'm going to drag that down so I can see more looking good. If I need to change the order of the teams so that team one is at the top and team 25 is at the bottom, I can do that through the pivot table. So let's click on sheet two. Let's click on row labels here and then click on the drop down list, choose Z to A. And if I go back to my dashboard, I can see my teams, the order of them, are now in the correct order. This is starting to look pretty good. But you know, the number of teams are just too much for my brain to take in. Wouldn't it be better if I can break down the teams by area? And we're gonna do this by means of a slicer. Make sure you've got this chart selected and click on Pivot Chart Analyze. Then go across and click on Insert Slicer. Next, we're going to go down and click on Area, then click on OK. Now I've created our North, South, East, West Slicer. I'm gonna drag my slicer up to the top and make the slicer a lot wider. Now I'm only really going to have four areas. It's rare that I'm gonna add in another area. So what I'm going to do is change the number of columns for this slicer. Go up to where it says columns and use the spinner on the right to change that to four. I'm then going to make the area slicer a little bit narrower and drag this at the top. So now when I click on north, I can see all of the north teams. When I click on south, I can see all of the south teams, east, and west. Don't you think that looks much better? What I'd like to do next is to have one big box that shows how much revenue was generated and I want this box to update when I click on the different areas in the slicer. First we're going to insert our shape. Click on insert, go to shapes, go down to and under rectangles I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle and I'm gonna draw this on top of my line chart. Next, I will need to link to a cell. Let's go back to sheet two. 
So I'm just going to click in cell A1, type in an equals, and then click on B8. And have a look, and it should say, get pivot data, sales amount, dollar $A, dollar three. Press enter on the keyboard, and we can see our total here in A1. I'm going to convert that to pounds and pence by changing the format to accounting. Now I'm going to go back to my dashboard, make sure I've got my rounded rectangle shape selected, click inside my formula bar at the top, type in an equals on the keyboard, go back to sheet two and click in cell A1. Now press enter and I can see that amount in that shape. Next, what I'm going to do is just centrally align that using the alignment buttons. Change the color to white and just increase the size to make it a little bit more obvious. I have, however, discovered a problem. When I click on the different areas using my slicer, only the Teams chart updates and I want this slicer to control all of them. This is what you do. Click on the border of the slicer or on the header so that it's selected. Click on slicer from the ribbon at the top. Go to the left and click on report connections. Next, make sure all of the pivot tables are ticked and then click on OK. So now when you click on a button in the slicer, all of the charts update. And now it's starting to look like a dashboard. Now I did say to stick around for something special. Say your boss or whoever you're working for wants this data analyzed by season in as much as they want to know how much revenue was generated in spring, summer, autumn or winter. How do you do that? This is what you do. The first thing is to create a season tab. So let's do that. Go down to the bottom and click on plus. I'm going to double click on sheet four and type in season and press enter. Next, let me just hold down control and roll away to zoom in. I'm going to click in A1 and type in month. Press tab and type in season. For the month, I'm going to type in one, three, six, nine, and 12. And to the right in B2, I'm going to type in winter, spring, summer, autumn, winter. So what we're going to do is create a VLOOKUP to cross-reference whatever the current month of the date is with season. The reason I've structured this table this way is because in order for the VLOOKUP to work, and especially with this exercise, I will need to make sure the first column, the lookup column, is in ascending order. And because month one, or January, is winter, I need to have winter twice, because winter spans across the year. So now that we've got this table, we're going to go back to our sheet here on table one. Let's just scroll up to the top, and I'm going to click in E1 and type in season and press enter. Let me control and use the wheel to zoom in so you can see the formula. So what I'm going to do is click on E2 and we're going to use the VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, press tab, month, open bracket, use your mouse to click on C and you see it comes up at date, close the bracket for month, type in a comma. Next for table array, we're going to click on season and select A1 to B6. Then on the keyboard, press the F4 key to put the dollar signs in and fix those references, make them absolute. Now type in a comma and we're going to type in a number two because the season where it says winter, spring, summer, autumn, etc., is the second column in that table array. Then type in a comma and we're going to type in true for approximate match. So if the month is, let's say, May, it's going to look between three and six, then look up to the three and find that May belongs to spring. That is how 
VLOOKUP works. Finally, I just need to close my bracket at the end and press enter and we can see the season is winter. Next, I'm going to click on winter and double click to bring it down. And if I scroll, I can see that the seasons are coming through into the table. Next thing I'm going to do is create a new pivot table to analyze by season. Click on sheet two where our pivot tables are. I'm going to use the date one seems appropriate. So let's highlight that, control C to copy. Let's just move across a little bit to the right. I try to place my pivot tables to the right of each other, next to them, not underneath. That can create overlapping problems. Control V to paste. And now I'm going to right click on that pivot table, go down to and choose refresh. And if you look to the right in the pivot table field sections, you can see that season has been added. So I want to remove date, so let me untick date. And I'm gonna untick years. I'm going to drag season into rows. But as you can see, we're having a similar problem. In fact, exactly the same problem as we did with North, South, East and West. It's in the wrong order. We want spring, summer, autumn, winter. We're going to create a custom list, another custom list. So let's just move across a bit to the right. I'm going to choose the N column for this and type in the correct order. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Select N1 down to N4. Go to File, all the way down to Options. Click on Advanced, and then scroll down and choose Edit Custom Lists. You can see N1 to N4 is selected. Click on Import, then click on OK. Click on OK again, and now we can press delete on the keyboard because we have no more need for this list. It's already been imported. Next, let's get this in the right order. So click in the seasons on the pivot table, click on the drop down list at the top, choose more sort options, go to more options, untick sort automatically every time the report is updated, and choose our spring, summer, autumn, winter, custom list. Click on OK. Make sure it's that ascending is selected under season. Click on OK. And now spring, summer, autumn, winter. Next thing we're going to do is create a stacked bar chart to represent those. So let's do that. So click anywhere on the data. Choose pivot table analyze at the top. Click on pivot chart. We're going to click and select bar and choose stacked bar. Click on OK. And we can see our bar chart, but it's not stacked. So what we're going to do is over on the right hand side in pivot chart fields, drag season from axis into legend. And now we can see this amount is stacked. Next, I don't want to have the axis at the bottom. So I'm going to click on that and press delete on the keyboard to remove that. But what I want to do is add some data labels. So click on the plus, go down to and choose data labels so I can see these amounts coming through. So I'm going to right click on our stacked bar chart, click on cut, go to our dashboard, right click, choose paste. There we have it. So I'm just going to make myself some room here. I'm just going to drag the column chart. Let me just close down pivot chart section on the right hand side. I'll drag that to the right. I'll drag my stacked bar chart just underneath the line chart. I will get rid of the axis here at the bottom. Just adjust here. Looking good. So if I click on north, I can see how much the north has made through the different seasons. South, how much the south has made, east and west. Last thing I need to do is update the colors. So I'm going to click on this chart, go to design and go to change colors. And I'm going to choose a yellow color for this chart and click on the other chart. So I'm going to go to design, click on change colors and choose the color yellow for that chart and the same for this chart here. 
What I want to do is change the season so that they're a little bit more appropriate. So spring, I'm just going to select that, right click, go to fill, and I'm going to choose a nice bright green color for spring. Autumn, not sorry, summer, I'm going to go to fill and choose a nice bright summery color. I'll go to more fill colors. Let's choose a burnt yellow color for summer. Autumn, right click, fill, more fill colors. Let's choose a brownie, autumny color. There we go. Finally, winter, right click, fill, more fill colors. And let's choose a cool blue. Looking fantastic. Obviously, the messier your data is, the harder it is to clean up. So what we'll do together in the next few tutorials is look at various ways that people mess up their data and how you can use Power Query to go about cleaning it up. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you click on that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss it. Also, if you are using one of these social media platforms, please make sure you check us out there, especially check out TikTok, on which we are giving you an Excel tip every day. If you would like somebody to come along and help you, then check out our website. Book yourself on one of our either face-to-face -face or online training courses. I think that about covers it. See you next time.